Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Someone said to me once, that, that devil is a bastard. You know, the person's eye open. The person came to see me has had about 13 miscarriages. Said to me, each time I take in, I have a dream. And someone comes to sleep with me in the dream, and the pregnancy goes. And when I went for deliverance, I was told, I have a spirit husband. And they've been trying to deal with the spirit husband for years. I say, a spirit husband is difficult to deal with. All this while. In natural, I will divorce him now. Is there no divorce in the spirit? Divorce him. And I said to her, you don't have a spirit husband. You have a rapist that you have given legitimacy to unconsciously. So I sat with her and we spoke for like 30 minutes to an hour. I explained from the word. The Bible says, if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Say, I am free indeed. I am free indeed. Whether here, whether watching, whether online or TV, today, <laughs> all those darkness, they will become bright lights. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When I was done with her, she sat up. <laughs> and that's how I knew this one has got in faith. Say, Pastor K, I said, well, that devil is a bastard. I didn't pray with her. I didn't pray. She left. She had a pregnancy. She was about three weeks then. Uh, that was the 14th pregnancy. He gave birth to that one. And another, and another. And they've gone to do medical means to stop conceiving. I said, Jesus is your spirit husband. For he paid your dowry with his blood. Then your husband, I mentioned his name, is your physical husband. You invited us to your wedding. If any other man shows up and says your husband, will you accept? He said, never. Uh, you know your husband. Okay? He said, no, if you know Jesus too, he's your spirit husband. And she's given birth and blocked all means to conceive after then. The devil is a bastard. Listen. You will excel. Yeah. I say to him, if he carries fire on his head, he will bring it down. We will tell him that the sons of God are here on ground. Hallelujah. God, since creation has been resting, and Jesus, since he ascended, has been resting. He's waiting. Because you are waiting on God. Waiting on God for what? Satan. Waiting till his enemies be brought under his what? His footstool. I will bring all those enemies. Poverty. Death, sickness, retrogression, stagnation will bring them under his feet in the name of Jesus. I said you have seven, oh, seven wars to fight. Seven wars. And last time I was talking about the fight of faith. Now I said you must not be ignorant of seven things. They don't be ignorant of the concerning them that are asleep, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. First Corinthians 12, concerning spiritual gifts, it says, don't be what? Ignorant. Yeah. Spiritual gifts. Then he went on and said, um, can't you remember all those things? It says, the day of the Lord, he said, a thousand years like a day before the Lord. He said, I will not have you ignorant of that. You must understand that what he's saying there is that all these 10 years, 15 years will run up on that. Say, so God can move in one day and in 40 days, you can retrieve what you have been chasing in 25 years. Say, so God, so don't be ignorant of that. Say, so for a day, a thousand years with the Lord is like a day. Say, so it doesn't cost him to move anything. Say, so don't be ignorant of that. Then he says, don't be ignorant of the devices of Satan, 2 Corinthians 11. 
Then he says, don't be ignorant of the righteousness of God. Romans 1, 16 to 17. Romans 11. He says, don't be ignorant. That one is talking about the timing of the law. Don't be ignorant of God's timing. That means you must know what time it is in God's calendar for your life. You must know. Don't be ignorant. No. But like I said, that's not what I'm sharing today. Me and 777. Don't hear me say it's a number. Otherwise, I'll come and do deliverance for you. Just say, Monkey Arisco, come out of him. In the name of Jesus. Say, what's your name? Say, my name is Monkey Arisco. Say, come out! Two thousand and fifteen. I've related this before. I saw two spirits coming from heaven. They wore suits. Can't remember whether they are white or black. Can't remember, but the color doesn't matter. They are spirits. In the spirit realm, there is neither Jew nor Greek, male, female, white or black. It's a natural realm. They're talking about that. Each time they take a feet, it's like horses galloping. But they were walking, and they were coming from the second heaven. They wore black suits, tie, looked like, you know what they call GQ? Those of you who went to school in the days, they called GQ. GQ, it's, don't let me, you know, some of you, you, you just, you know, like some of you, you just go to Bukas, you don't understand three course meal, you don't even know what it means, sweet corn and all those stuff, you know. So the Lord will open your understanding, it will brighten your horizon spiritually, emotionally, and physically. You know, you need favor with God and men. Favor with God alone, you'll be like John the Baptist. They will say, of all men, born of woman, there has been none greater than John. That's all we hear. You'll be living in wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey. But when you have favor with men, God and men, you will have that approval. Say, of my servant David, that's approval. He lived in the palace with maids and servants, enjoying life. You will have favor with God and men. It's not enough to have with God only. Amen. Amen. And I saw those two spirits, they were wearing suits, tall. Each time they make, they take a step, you have, like horses, like, like a chariot of an army moving. Not like, biri, biri. no. You are, they take a, you have, was the heavens were shaking. And they looked so normal. And they were coming and descending from heaven. And I was watching, what is this? They were coming from the second heaven into the earth. And as they touched the earth, instead of the heavens shaking, the earth will shake when they take a, a step. Like horses, like 200 horses moving to battle. Like that. And I looked ahead and I said to the one in front, that is a spirit of accidents and medical complications. Then I looked behind the second one. I apparently noticed I was trying to get him, so he was trying to hide behind the I said, no, that's the spirit of death. And I said, ooh. In that vision, I found out that if I tried to stop two of them, I might not be able to. I said, let me leave the medical complication and stop the spirit of death. I had this chain in my hand, this chain. So I began to turn it, woo, woo. As the spirit of death, he knew I wanted to capture him. So he looked at me and was coming. He looked, so I took, it was, if you can't miss the chain. I can't explain how the chain was, but you can't miss it. I flung the chain at it to capture it. And he took a step and leapt into the air. Escaped the chain and dropped and continued to go. And I said, no natural means can stop these guys. And I heard a voice, deal with them. And I woke up. And I noticed from 2015, so many young people have been dying. I, I've had my hands full. I've had my hands full. And you just see, you've been in hospital in the last few days, you see a young man healthy, perfectly okay, walking, and all of a sudden his two legs just crippling and he gets paralyzed. No sickness, no nothing. And all of a sudden, the legs paralyze, the hands paralyze, he stops hearing, he stops speaking, and he can open his eyes, but he's in a state of semi-kuma. Then, the mother spends 
over 250,000 on tests. And the teaching hospital finds absolutely nothing wrong. They run all scans. They say, perfectly okay. Infection, perfectly okay. Nerves, everything okay. I kept saying, it's one of those spirits. It's one of those spirits. I recognize them when they operate. And there's so many of them. They are all over the place, like demons encroaching everywhere. 2 Corinthians 12, 7, I read, and lest, I don't know how people read this scripture, I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing, I besought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me, and the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Let me verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then am I strong. Now, too many people say, Paul, this, now, this is a messenger of Satan. Now, who sends the messenger of God? Who sends the messenger of God? It's God. So who sends the messenger of Satan? It's Satan. Because people say it came from God. No, this never came from God. This is from Satan. Now, God cannot tell Satan to send his messenger. Neither can Satan tell God to send his messenger. Each one sends his own. Gabriel said, Zechariah, I have been sent from God to bring you good tidings of good news. Hail Mary, I am Gabriel. I have been sent from God. So God sends his own messengers, while Satan sends his own messengers. And everything Satan does, John 10.10 10 says, the thief cometh but what to steal, to kill, and eventually to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So when you see evil like this, God is not involved. The Bible says in James chapter 1 from verse 12, God tempts no man with evil. He said in Luke, is it 11, which of you will ask your, 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 with your daughter or your child, ask you for bread? Will you give him a stone? If he ask you for fish, will you give him a snake? No. He said, if you be evil, will not do that to your children. How much more God who is good? There is no evil in God. He tempts no man with evil. He brings no evil to no man. All the evil comes from Satan. And that's why he showed me that vision. And that's what, the, those are the guys all over the place. You see people held it today. Someone called me. So oh, my our brother died. I said, was he six? He said, no. Even I met a former neighbor, uh, somebody that would play on uh, 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 tennis together. I said, madam, I'll need it. He said, no, I can't. I said, what's the problem? He said, our husband just died. I said, was he sick? He said, no. Was anything wrong? He said, no. He woke up in the morning, 5 a.m., looked at the TV, just wanted to have a short nap, and he didn't return. Just went like that. I said, oh, my goodness. Just like that. And many, many kids. But that ought not to be. We can cap it, end it, destroy it. And that's what I intend to do today. And I will do that. I will do that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, I said there are seven wars you fight. One of them is against Satan, his demons, and his agents. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of the darkness of this age, powers, and wicked spirits in heavenly places. You're going to face the kingdom of darkness. And you must subdue them otherwise. That man can never, in the kingdom of darkness, they have custody of some things that belong to your well-being and your peace. The kingdom of darkness, when Jesus died on the cross, he went to hell because the sins of the world was upon him. A cross... The gates of hell held all his sons and his trophies and all 
his prophets from all what he has done on the earth. Between him and that prophet were the everlasting gates of darkness. Abraham said to the rich man, no man can cross from that place to this place. And no man can go from this place to that place. There's a great gulf. They call it the everlasting gates, the bars of iron. No man ever crossed. When Jesus wanted to cross, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up your They told Jesus, who are you? Meaning, we will not open. Your children are ours. And ours to keep. He said, I will give unto thee the hidden riches of darkness, your wealth, your promotion, everything. He said, he has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. Satan has taken custody of some of them. And you must retrieve it from him. Otherwise, you will not be able to stand before God. He will call you a wasted investment. But that won't be your portion. Amen. We will push. Say, I pursue. I, 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 I overtake. I recover all. Oh. In the name of Jesus. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. You know, it's not just money still. Say for your shape, it, you have double. So it retrieves honor. It keeps it. It keeps honor. All those things say you have this, you have that. He keeps everything. Shields it and puts strong men with flaming swords to guard them. Then he tells the ritualist, if you can give me this, I'll give you out of it. If you can give me this, I'll give you. Actually, he gives them a tip of what belongs to them. In Matthew 13, Jesus was talking about a parable of the harvest which we're in and the parable of the tars. In Matthew 13, from verse 24, he said, Another parable put it forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. While men slept, his enemy came, sowed tars among the wheat, went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. Then the servants of the household that came and said, Sir, did you not go sow good seed in your field? Where are the tars coming from? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, will you then that will go and gather them up? He said, no, lest while you gather up the tars, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until harvest. In the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, take note again. He said, pray. He said, they don't deal with the kingdom of darkness. Messengers of Satan will pray. He said, Paul said, there was sent to me to buffet me. A messenger from Satan. I prayed three times. It was not solved. It's not conquered through prayer. I prayed three times. You think Paul doesn't know how to pray? That's man that wrote three quarters of the Bible. People are praying against me. Those two spirits, God told me, they can't be solved through prayers. We'll show you how to deal with it. I will deal with them. <laughs> hey, all those homes, they are holding people captive. They will let today. They are free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know one of the things I love about Moses? When Pharaoh began to negotiate with him, he said, go with your wives. Leave the children. Moses said, never. We will not go with, we will not leave our children behind. When the plagues got worse, Pharaoh said, okay, come. Go with your wives and your children. Leave your flocks. Moses said, never. Then you know what Pharaoh said? Get out of my sight. Next time I see you, you will be killed. He didn't he was ready to let go of the wives and the children. He was not ready to let go of their finances. He said, if you discuss that finance with me again, I will slaughter you, Moses. Because Satan knows you can't go too far without those finances. You know, you can't go too far. When his son died, he said, come and take your flocks and get out. That's what it takes for Satan to let go. That's what it takes for Satan to let. You see these headsmen, they say, uh, conference, restructuring, 
structure and we take this head spin away. These demons in human form, I'll take them out. Yeah. <laughs> the angel that slaughtered 180,000 soldiers is still alive Hallelujah. and is still under our command. Yeah. We'll deal with them. Yeah. We will deal with them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So, in interpreting that in verse 37, he answered and said, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The tars are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is in the end of the world. How many of you believe we're in harvest time? So there are more tars springing up now. Right? All over the place. But let me tell you where they're going to end. In the fire. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend with them which do iniquity and cast them where? Into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is not going to happen in heaven. It's happening here. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who are the ears? Let him hear. We need to deal with them so you can shine. Amen? Amen. When they say arise, shine. That arise. One of them is deal with the task. That's one of the statements of Arise. Arise is loaded, it's pregnant. When they said in Isaiah 60, said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of God is risen. For behold, darkness is covering the earth, gross darkness. In the midst of so much tars, rise up. One of them is take the tars, throw them into the fire. They shine. In the midst of darkness, shine. So Satan wants your life. He wants your resources. He wants your family. He wants your faith. He wants your testimony. He wants your prosperity. You don't believe it. He even wants your dead body. In Jude verse 9, an archangel Michael, you know, angels buried Moses. They buried him in the rock. Moses was not buried in the soil. He was buried in the rock. Moses and angels buried Moses. Archangel Michael disputing with Satan about the body. That means Satan wanted to take the body. Taking everything is mean, heartless, wicked. He wants family, he wants your money, he wants your health, he wants your resources, he wants your wife, he wants your husband, he wants your children, he wants everything, he wants your eternal. Then he wants the dead body again. Michael said, no, you will not touch this body. Well, you know, after one year, Elisha's bones will still raise somebody from the dead. So he needs that body, actually. He needs that body. That's how serious it is. He wants everything, including the dead body. In every physical evil you see, there's a spiritual ruler. In Ezekiel chapter 28, Ezekiel, chapter 28, I read from verse 1. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up, you have said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet you are a man. So this is a man. And not God. Though you set your heart as a heart of God. You are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With your wisdom and thy understanding, you've gotten the riches, you've gotten gold, silver to thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and thy traffic, you've increased your riches. Your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of God, I will bring strangers upon thee, terrible of the nations. They will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom. They will defy your brightness. And he went on. Then that is the prince of Tyre. Now, he addressed the king of Tyre in verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre. Now, the king gives birth to a prince. So the king is higher than the prince. That's normal, right? A prince is aspiring to be a king. So this one is stronger than the one on ground, than the prince. The prince is the man. The king is the spirit. When we take out the spirit, the man will become weak. 
Then we can take out the man. If you try to take out the man without the spirit, it could boomerang. He said, verse 12, against the king of Tyre said to him, Thus said the Lord God, you are the sum and full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Oh, as at the time of Ezekiel, he was in Eden. No, that's not a man. Every precious stone was your covering. Now, a man can't cover himself with precious stones. Sardius, Topax, Diamond, Berry, Onyx, Jasper, Sapphire, Emerald, Carbonco, Gold. That was what he used as a covering. The workmanship of your tablets. So it's a skill of workmanship of music. So there is no music instrument that he cannot produce by his workmanship. So he understands the art of entertainment very, very well. Thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that was created. You are the anointed cherub that covered. So he's the head of the entire angelic rank, including Michael and Gabriel. And I have said this so, that was upon the holy mountain of God. You walked up in the midst of the stones of fire. So ordinary fire can't consume him. He walks in fire. He is the king of Tyrus, fueling the atrocities of the prince of Tyrus. Praise God. I told you this story about a lady who had a frozen pelvis, and she was bleeding from about age 16. More than 20 years she was bleeding. And she was on drugs for more than 20 years. And her intestine and her womb had frozen to become one single piece. It could not be separated. When they took her for surgery and the doctors opened up, they said they call it frozen pelvis. That it cannot be separated. And she has to leave. She had fibroid. So she was bleeding. She was a teacher, secondary school teacher, spending about 30,000 naira a month on drugs. Always weak. When she spoke, she couldn't speak. Ah, stop. You have to move near to hear what she's saying. Very weak. Now, they say, King of Tyros, causing that ailment. We didn't even know. When she met with me, I said, I have to take you through some scriptures and then pray with you and you'll be fine. And I canceled about seven appointments as I rescheduled seven appointments, which I gave her to meet with me. On the seventh appointment, when I met her, I was still trying to tell her I have to reschedule again. She said, sir, I had a dream. I said, what was the dream? I saw three masquerades. Those are the people behind all the problem for 22 years that we didn't know. So I saw three masquerades. I said, what, what was it? I said, they had cane whips in their hands. So what happened? I said, they were beating me in a dream. When I woke up, my body's aching. As I'm talking to you, I'm in pain. I said, that's okay. We we'll deal with that. Then we we'll deal with the frozen pelvis. I didn't know that those three masquerades, those king of Tyros, were behind the frozen pelvis. So I laid hands on her. I said, whatever Satan has inflicted on your body that God didn't put there, I destroy it right now in Jesus' name. I set you loose from every oppression of the kingdom of darkness. And those three masquerades, I bind them in Jesus' That was simple. It didn't take two minutes. So you can go. So the pain is gone. You can go. I said, come now. Uh, next appointment, we deal with the frozen pelvis. When she came, the pelvis had defrozen. The fibroid had disappeared. The bleeding had stopped. It was those three masquerades. That's how it is for so many people. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.